So, uh, Jared, let me go back to you. You guys, you can see my screen. Yeah, I see your screen. Yep. So, what do we call this um, process on the computer A side when all the information is being gathered together and then sent over to the computer B side of things? There's a word. Um, uh, encapsulation, right? Is that a question? No, no. It's encapsulation. Encapsulation. Jenlene, so what's the what's the other the other word curled here? The other word on the B side when you're basically unpacking the message. Um Jeline, are you there? Um, yes, um, I think I want application. I can't hear what you're saying. Application. Application? What's application? The question I asked is, Jared just told us here, oh, yes. the first process when you put together the information is called encapsulation. Okay. So what's the opposite of it? The word. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Jelly, were you here on what day was that? On, th on Tuesday? Um, yes. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we just talked about, no, what Jared just said now about encapsulation, what page is that on? I'm sorry, I have to open the text book. Can I answer instead? Nope. If you were here, then I assume that you were paying attention, taking down your notes. And so, you know, just that asking the question just to review what we talked about so you know i mean i understand that you might not fully um you know get everything we're talking about but you got to at least know what we talked about okay you mentioned this and you mentioned that so jelin go ahead is the encapsulation what page is that on um I forgot what page. Um... Jeline, this is not this is not good. You're forgetting too many things, and you're telling me that you were in class. So when you're in class, what do you do when you're in class? What's I mean, what do you do? Do you just like log in and just disappear? Do you no. do you have do you take down notes? Do you have notes for yes. all the important things that we say? You have notes. Do you have notes, Jelly? Yes. So if you have notes, this is a very, uh, I guess we really emphasized these two terms. So what is in your notes? All right. You know, lectures are for students. They're not for me, they're for you guys. So if I give the lectures and you don't take the notes, and you're going to struggle when you have assignments, I think. Chow. Shall, rather. Shall. So what is the other word? What's the other term? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was the encapsulation for the computer. All right, so what page is, what page is that on? Oh, sorry. It was on 353. Okay, page 353. That's where it is. We talked about it. You're going to see this question a couple of times in your assignment. you got to know where it is. You may not understand it 100%, but you've got to have an idea that, okay, this is kind of like what we talked about. And then you ask a question if you're not sure about something. That's what lectures are, right? You, have, you ask a question, okay. Um, so let's go over it again, right? And then we'll move on. 
So right there, like you said, Chow, on page 353, we used an example, right? We used an example uh, to kind of, Jared, can you help us with that? What's this example? You know, just trying to break things down to make, you know, make sense of it. Can you like be a professor for like two minutes, Jared? So going off of what you said yesterday, if you look at it like a postcard, I mean, like a lot, the, the, the stuff you mail, that's what I'm trying to say. If you look at it like that, you put it in the envelope, you put it on the stamp, you put it in, you send it. And then when you get it, you have to take it out, then read it. Okay. <clears throat> so what part is the encapsulation part? And what part is the the encapsulation part, Anthony? From what Jared, Professor Jared, just um, told you guys, the encapsulation would be the data. So that is like you're basically putting the data into the. Well, I guess in that case, the data would be the the letter, and the the and yeah. So that would be putting it in into the envelope. The deencapsulation would be the opposite, where the person takes the letter out of the envelope. Okay, uh, Justin, does that ring a bell? We, did we talk about this? Um, do, sorry, I looked away for a second. What? Justin, are you there? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, answer the question. Does that what um, these two guys just said, does that make sense to you? About the stamp um, and letter analogy? Yeah, it made sense, yeah. So what part is the encapsulation and what part is the other one, Justin? Other what? Justin, have you been here since we started like a few minutes ago? Yeah. I said that I looked away and then you, you called on me. You looked away. It's yeah. okay to look away, but what have you heard? We're talking about Dean encapsulation. It's on page three. Exactly. So, so yeah. So what is using this analogy of a letter stamp and all that? If you have, if you had a job interview and your interviewer said, all right, Justin, you're trying to get this IT job. So give me an idea. What do you think the encapsulation is? Just give me some kind of analogy. How would you express yourself? Um, I'm assuming when you're using the letter uh, analogy, you're talking about like the PDU as like the letter and you transfer the letter to like a different mailbox, which is like an application layer. Jared, do you, I mean, so Justin, do you understand what you just said yourself? <laughs> Not really. Okay, so are you just trying to just tell me something? Uh, you know, I'm this is, this is question, for you, right? I don't, yeah, like, I'm just trying to answer the question. Okay. So do you recall we talked about encapsulation and de encapsulation on Thursday, on Tuesday? Uh, kind do you of recall it? that? Yeah. What do you mean, kind of? You were not, you were not really here, or you were not paying attention, or you were confused by the whole idea. Uh, I'm, yeah, I went to the bathroom for like for a period of time, and there was like a big kind of discussion about that. So I don't know if I missed that or not. Okay, so let's say, uh, Justin, for some reason you you didn't make it to that class on Tuesday. Let's just say, right? Let's say you had, you know, you had to be away for all the time. Do you, what would you do to, to, you know, get a sense of everything we talked about? Let's watch just say you missed the lecture. class. Watch the lecture. Okay. Did you, did that occur? Do you, did you do that? Like, oh, well, I'm, I'm sure I missed some things. Let me go and watch that lecture. Uh, did, did you do that or were you planning to do that? I didn't go back and watch the lecture, no. Okay. So I'm, do you think I'm stressing you out right now? Like, why are you asking me all these questions? It's uh, just kind of fine. I didn't just 
it's okay right now. I get why you're asking though. Know? It's just I'm just kind of answering them. Oh, you get why I'm asking. Why am I asking them? Because you want me to understand the material by like missing, like catching everything I missed. Um, it's kind of I'm just yeah. Well, do you think it's important to catch everything you missed in class or, you know, if we are done with class and go and look at the lecture? Yeah. Okay. Today hasn't started out very well, guys. So I'm struggling right now to know, you know, when we're having classes, you know, what's happening to you guys. You know, maybe I'm not communicating. Maybe there's something that needs to be tweaked. I mean, we almost said we only have, we have three three, two or two, two chapters left after chapter seven, which is like two or three weeks and we're done. So at this late stage, I am wondering what is going on. Harvey, tell me what is going on. Is it that what, when we have lectures, you know, it's just confusing. Nobody understands, you know, it's like, what is all this, I mean, I can't, you know, I can't. crap we're talking about, you know, we don't get it. You just keep going on and on and on and on. What is happening? I I can't speak on behalf of what other people are going through, but I mean, I'm just trying to pay attention to the material. So my assumption is when we have lectures, you know, people are taking notes. If you have a question, you ask a question and then we have a recording. So you can always go back to the recording, which we do every class. Right. So maybe um, that's not what students do. Students don't do all that stuff, right? Harvey? I mean, possibly, yes, but I can't speak on behalf of. I mean, I mean, uh, honestly, I do go back and like watch the recordings just to get like if I'm missing something from my notes or like, you know. All right. Well, we spent the first 15 minutes talking about, you know, what you guys are dealing with here, because I don't know. I just assume that when I ask the question, it's a different thing if I ask a question that we have never talked about. Then you're like, uh, what are you talking about? But if we talked about it, then you have it in your notes. Now, you might not understand it 100%, like I said, but you've got to know that we talked about it if you were here, right? I mean, that's how you prepare for assignments and exams, and that's how you prepare for your future in IT. I try to do things that are practical here. This is not just a waste of your time, except you plan to end up in nursing. You know, there needs to be a waste of your time because, well, nurses probably don't be, need a lot of this information. Amy, are you planning to go to nursing and no. not IT? What? No, sir. You're going to be in IT? Yes, I don't want to be a nursing student. Why? What's wrong with nurses? Nothing's wrong with them. They save lives. It's just not for me. I've, I can't even watch, um, uh, what's that show? Grey's Anatomy? I don't like that show. I don't know what's so good about it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's let's see what we can do here. Uh, I'm kind of like forgotten what we're talking about now. So, let's see. Chris L. Encapsulation and de-encapsulation. Right. Explain to me the de-encapsulation part. You know, use any analogy you like. Can I still use the envelope analogy? Or? Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, encapsulation would be you putting the letter, like the data you want to send in the envelope, and then you write, you write the, uh, what do I call it, like the final location that you want to send it to, the final destination, in the middle of the envelope, and then where it's coming from in the top left corner, and then the encapsulation would be basically receiving the letter, seeing who it's from, and seeing who it's for. So if it's for you, obviously, you just open up the letter and then, you know, you uh, you you read the letter since it's for you. All right, so Chris, um, so in terms of networking, what is the whole encapsulation process? What are you encapsulating, if you know uh, what I mean? Isn't it data, like the data that you're sending? Exactly. So what, what makes up that, what makes up, you know, 
what's the what are all the pieces of that data? Uh, or some pieces anyway. Aren't the units couple called, of pieces? Aren't the units called frames or datagrams? I don't know. Just tell me what are some pieces of information that is part of your encapsulation. Uh, don't worry about the name of the. Of the Say it again. Destination. Destination what? Destination of uh, where you want to send the data to. So like. Okay. I guess it could be an IP right. address, maybe. Not guess. Um, it absolutely is an IP address, Chris. Yep. <laughs> it's it's got to be an IP address, right? Yeah. Your face. If it's a physical letter, like we just see, this is somebody's, you know, main street in Alaska, right? Yeah. So on the network side, it is your IP address to whoever you're sending the information to. Yeah, like a public IP now, address of course, or something. Now, of course, I mean, you don't care about what the IP address is. I mean, you don't, you don't look up the IP address. You just, you know, do your email or you go to your Netflix or you go to your YouTube. You don't care about any of that stuff. But on the back end, right, the protocols have to get themselves together. So the destination you're talking about there is the IP address. So you have to source. So at every stage here, right, at every stage of this process on the computer A side, application, presentation, session, a lot of stuff is happening. Information is being gathered. So on step one, application, right, you go to your application, which is, it might be your FTP, like we talked about, right? You go to your application. That is part of the process. Right, yeah. you go to your application. Step two, presentation. Presentation layer is where things get encrypted. So whatever I want to send through my FTP program has to be encrypted for security. Step three, session layer. What, what happens at the session layer? Well, a session is created. If I connect to my server here, right, a session is created. If I go to, let me just grab some random file here. And I just, uh, let me see, let me just go here. And I hit, you know, I just double click on that, on that. This file on the left side moves to the right side. Yep. So there's a session in, there's a session in place right now. In fact, you can see right here, Chris, you see up here, it yeah. says uh, the, uh, the transfer was successful. Right now, there's a session taking place. That's step three. Step four, the transport, uh, the transportation, Sorry, not transportation. The transport layer, right, has to move that data, um, you know, depending on, you know, what the data is. But in most cases, it's going to be uh, TCP or UDP, right? So TCP is the more guaranteed option. UDP is less guaranteed. So transport, the transport layer is going to come into play here to ensure that my data gets there. Transport layer, we also talked about things like, you know, Flow control, right? Flow control. Do you remember we talk about flow control? Did um, we talk about the um, the alien? Yeah. Eat it with a spoon. Hello, what is a spoon? Doesn't uh, <laughs> what? Wasn't it also briefly mentioned when we went over like NAT as well? Because NAT has like a built-in uh, flow control kind of. Uh, well, NAT, uh, network address translation, that is when your IP address is changed from a private to a public IP. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? So transport, the transport uh, layer handles things like flow control. What's flow control? We're talking about puzzles, right? Every time we look at a picture of a puzzle, we're talking about flow control. We're talking about puzzles. And we said that data... Uh, we used, you know, some of these examples here. Dennis, what did we talk about, you know, about puzzles? How did we use that? Do you remember? Sorry, I don't. Uh, nobody remembers how we, what we talked about puzzles, like how that's relevant. Brooke, do you remember that? Puzzles? Did we compare yeah. it to anything? Um, I don't remember what it was compared to, but I remember the analogy. Okay, what's the analogy about? That's the question. Uh, who remembers? I remember. Okay, let's have it. Yeah, it's basically uh, basically the encapsulation and the encapsulation of packets when they're sent, how they're broken down and built back up. 
and how they basically in the during during transport they're basically sent in chunks and put back together. Kind of like a puzzle because exactly. all the packets don't come at the same time. Exactly. That's exactly it. Right? And we use all these analogies so that, you know, kind of makes sense to you, sort of. So that's what it is. When the data is traveling, it might be too big. It's not going to go all at once. It's going to be split into pieces, like puzzle. When it gets to the other end, it's put back together again. I'm not sure if it was in this class, but I asked a question about if anybody remembers the story of um, H-U-M-P-T-Y. Did we talk about it in this class? Maybe the other uh, class? Yeah. yeah, we did it here. All right, so what did we talk about? We said, you know, we couldn't put it together again because, you know, who knows what happened happen to Humpty Dumpty. But when it comes to the transport layer, well, it does a better job of putting everything back together. So, all right, so, keep, so going all along with the FTP, so you got to, trans so you got to the network layer, Right. Well, the network layer has to ensure that the IP address, the right addresses are in there or else the transfer couldn't take place. Right. If I was able to expand this, for example, you might be able to see some addresses. All right. Do you see addresses here? So you can see right here. I try to connect. Then there's an IP address that is connecting to. It's got to verify everything. Right. So it's got to pick up and it says connecting to the IP address. So there's got to be connections, and that's what happens on the network layer. The data link layer is where, uh, you know, your MAC address and a few other things, you know. Up. So this is when you, this is the encapsulation, right, Chris? Is when you're putting together all that information. Well, not you, you know, like not you, but when the network system is putting together everything. It's, this is what we say data. Data is not just empty words. Data is composed of information. If you, if you took data and you broke it up like an egg, you will see that inside that data is all this information. The application that sent it, what kind of encryption, the IP address, the MAC address. Then the final thing is the physical layer. If, if, if I was disconnected from the internet, like it says right now for a few seconds, if I'm disconnected from the internet, I'm not going to be able to transfer anything. I will have no connection. So with my connection, everything goes out of the network. That's the whole encapsulation process. On the other end, even though these things are sort of, you know, um, logical or maybe invisible, to use that word you might understand, the reverse has to happen. The data has to be opened up and all the information inside has to be used or useful going back and forth. So you're always having encapsulation, de-encapsulation on an ongoing basis. Important uh, concept for you to have an idea of. A lot of these things get more real if you're in a work setting, like on the job. It gets a bit more real to you, but you got to you got to write this note down. Like, okay, this is how I make the connection here. All right. So, if you look in your PowerPoint, you're going to see this page it says when data arrives at the receiving end, it is passed up the protocol stack. At each layer, software reads its PDU data and strips it of the header. Basically, it does the de-encapsulation process. So on the, on, on the side A of things, right, you go application, presentation, session, transport, network, data, link, physical. Here you start physical data, network, transport, session. So reverse, right? That's what it means here. It passes it from the next layer and keeps going higher up. Okay, um, so we talked about presentation layer, I mean, about the presentation layer. One of the key things on the presentation layer was one word. Anybody remember? It starts with an E. Jojo. Yes, I'm here. So Jojo, what's one of at least one of the important things that happens on the on the presentation layer? I gave you a clue. Starts with an E. Uh, 
is it the encapsulation? Georgia, we we'll just talk about encapsulation. We're talking about the presentation layer. One of the key things that happens on that presentation layer, we looked at it on page 364, starts with an E. When you're transferring data, it's something happens to make the data more secure. What's oh, that? Encryption, encryption, sorry. Encryption, right? Yes. You sure it's encryption, Jojo? Yeah. Like yes with an exclamation point or yes with a question mark? Yes, with three exclamation points. Oh, three. Wow, I like that. Okay, three. So it's right there on page uh, 354. And that's why uh, we looked at uh, we looked at a what you would call it. We looked at a you know here's an example of a secure website and how you know the information. If you you know click on the lock yourself on your browser, you're going to see uh, the encryption information, right? It says right there on the presentation layer, uh, page 54, like in the second paragraph, right? uh the mid the last part of the second paragraph as another example a web browser that connects to a secure web server with encryption protocols must encrypt data before it's transferred right then it says this too is a presentation layer function encryption of your information is a function of the presentation layer if that's all you remember about the presentation layer, you're good, right? Because it's a key function on the, on the um, what you would call it, on the presentation layer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's look at, uh, uh, Jojo, let's, let me stay with you. Let's look at another thing. I didn't mention this before, but you might want to write it down as another function or something else that happens on the presentation layer. So do you have that page, Jojo 354? Yes, I do. Okay, so the second paragraph, it says an example of functionality at this level, see that part? You can read it, right? Under the topic of, say it again? You said to read it, right? Yeah, sure. Jojo, what's going on? Yeah, I'm on the page. I'm just not, not sure where to start. You said All right, so you see the topic, you see that title presentation layer in red? Yes. Or whatever color it's it. Now go to the second paragraph. It starts with an example. Oh, the whole paragraph, okay. Like no, not right. the whole thing, just the first couple of sentences. Okay. Uh, an example of what is a web browser displaying graphics and embedded in in this situation well, we've lost you jojo can you hear me okay we can hear you now you kind of went silent when you were reading sorry i don't know what happened um in this situation the presentation layer component informs the application layer what type of data or graphics format to display another example involves character conversion. For example, PCs present, present represent the carriage return line feed uh, combination in text files differently than Linux and Unix systems do. Okay, stop. This, all this stuff might sound like jazz to you, like, what did I just read? Um, maybe the best example I can keep, uh, 
maybe give you is let's see let me open up let me open up um you guys can see it's microsoft word let's see i want to open up a file here open uh go to my files find a file here so let me see if this can work uh let me go to here how about if i go here how about if i try to open up a java file right a file that was made in like Java. I want to open up in this uh, program here. All right. Oh, actually, I'm surprised it actually opened it. Well, this is not a good example then. Let me find another file. I knew that was going to open. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, how about if I want to open up a HTML file? Okay, let's see. He's trying to open up a HTML file. Nothing's happening. It's not really opening that up. So it's not giving me the example I'm trying to create here. Let me try, let me try something else here. How about if I have an Excel file here? Go to this junk file here. All right, let me try this here. Okay, Jojo, can you see this? Yes, I can. Okay, now see what, say it again. I said, yes, I can. All right, so see what happens now. Now I'm in Microsoft Word. I'm trying to open up a an Excel file. Should it open up correctly? Um, it looks like it, but I'm not sure. So let's see what happens. Let's click OK here. All right, this is my Excel file open up in Microsoft Word. Can you read what's here? Not really. This is like symbols and looks like things are missing. Just a bunch of nonsense characters. So what do you think happened here? Now you read a word, when you read all this, this uh, sentences, now a lot of stuff might not make sense, but you might have seen a word there called conversion, something about yeah, conversion, right? Probably it didn't like transfer it properly, I guess. Well, the word is convert. Right. You didn't convert it correctly. Why do you think that? Why do you think that happened? Why didn't they do that? Uh, Jared or oh, anybody? Uh, could it be possible that the format of the file isn't correct? I see it's .xls. So. Yeah, but I mean the file. No, the format of the file is correct. I mean XLS is a valid Excel file. But why do you think Microsoft Word didn't do the conversion correctly? Because the file is still encrypted. Because it, look, it looks to me like it's ciphertext, or mostly ciphertext. So it's not, it's not converting because the file is protected? Yes. The file is not protected. It's just a regular file. Oh, OK. Yes, it was off. Well, Excel. Excel is a different application than Word, so I mean, maybe it's not the, yeah, it doesn't unpack it correctly or format it correctly, I'm guessing. The question is, why not? Or why do you think? Why, why do you think not? Mm, I, think it, it's, I think it's uh, not interpreted correctly. It's just not, like... I guess. Yes, uh, you're right. It's not in, it's not interpreted correctly. You're absolutely correct. But why not? That's the question. Why not? Word isn't equipped to do it. It's like trying to open a C, uh, try to run a C file on a Python compiler and using that language. Yeah, it's just, it's just, just not can't. compatible. Yeah. That's the word. It's not compatible. It is not compatible. It doesn't. You're right. Also, it doesn't have the necessary uh necessary uh what you would call it now tools or you know inbuilt functionality to do that right so it's not able to properly read that information it can convert it right it can't now what uh jojo just read it might sound like a whole lot of greek to you but that's basically what it's saying about the presentation layer there's sometimes when you require data to be converted 
into a form that is readable, the presentation layer takes care of stuff like that. It might be from one application to, your, to the other application, because right here, it talks about um, something about, let's see, um, an example of functionality at this level is a web browser displaying graphic files embedded in a web page. So if you have a web browser trying to you know, display an image, it says, well, the presentation layer components inform the application layer what type of data or graphics format to display. Another example involves character conversion. For example, pieces represent the carriage return. What's carriage return? When you hit the enter key, Jojo, carriage return is the enter key on your keyboard. When I hit the enter key, right? The enter key, that's what it means by carriage return. It's just a, a big technical word. You're like carriage return sounds like something in the movies, in the old movies. So uh, the whole character conversion is what we're talking about here. When characters, you know, I've said it a lot of times, Stuff that happens online, in networking, even in life, nothing is just automatic or magical. It is set up to work the way it works. Somebody set it up to, to work the way it works. It was designed. It was programmed, let's say. Well, Microsoft Word is not programmed to read Excel files. But like as you saw, I opened up a Java file. And if you know anything about Java, you might be able to recognize some of these guys here. Um, well, it seems to be programmed to read Java files, so it opened up this file with no problem. So two things that happen on the presentation layer, if you saw that question in an assignment or something, uh, file conversion, right? character conversion, and encryption. Abdurrahman, what are those two things? Sorry, what? What are two things? Can you Anthony, you want to help Abdurrahman out? Yeah, what are those two things the on the presentation layer? Presentation layer? Um, uh, encryption and decryption, right? Yeah. I just said something now, and you just responded with something totally different. Two things that happen on the presentation layer. Encryption, that's one, or we say encryption and decryption, that's one thing. We'll put that as one thing. The other thing is character conversion, file conversion. That's what oh, we just okay. described. Okay. So let me try this again. Brandon, what are the two things that happen on the presentation layer based on what we just said? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, encryption and conversion. Say it again. Encryption and conversion or deconversion. Conversion of what? Of the messages. What messages? Uh, the data that's sent to the presentation layer. This is so this is so weird to me, you know, guys. Um, it's really weird because we just said something like two seconds ago, and I'm wondering if I'm not communicating. Maybe I need to do this this lecture in Chinese. You know, whatever you guys can choose a different language. I can I can speak a lot of languages. So maybe a different language besides English. Brooke, uh, how about that? So it's um so so it's so it's so it so it's the encryption and decryption of um, no 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 you guys haven't answered my question should I should we lecture in a different language besides English maybe English is not you know what's happening Michael what were you gonna say uh, I was actually gonna ask a question about it uh, so <clears throat> so the uh, conversion and encryption that that have the presentation layer. And that's uh, just just to be clear, because I think I, I got a little bit um, sidetracked when I was thinking about the way uh, programs open a file after it's sent. 
Um, so does that, that packet lies in the presentation layer. So when a program opens something, does it look at that layer to say, to basically say, oh, I say, say a Microsoft Word, I'm looking at a doc file. Okay, I can accept this. I can, I can de-encrypt this. And if it doesn't do that, it tries to, it does its best. And then you just see what you see. Okay. So here's the answer to that question. Back to what Georgia just read for us, right? Are you looking at the Michael Pritt 254? Yeah. In that second paragraph? Okay. The second paragraph, the second sentence, it says, in that question you just asked, in this situation, what happens? The presentation okay. layer component informs what? Uh, it informs the application layer which type of data or graphic format to display. Exactly. They have a conversation. Okay, what are you trying to do here? Well, this is what I'm trying to do. Can you help me out? Well, you got to pay me for that. All right. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, right? They yeah. have a conversation. And then the presentation layer knows if it can do it or if it needs extra help or whatever. I don't know. I'm not there when those guys are do doing their stuff, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but they have a conversation to see if the job is possible. Right. So this is um this is more or less we're talking about this is kind of the structure of files in general and they're they're structured so they can be sent and received in the same way and this, that's what these kind of layers are. Well, now you notice that because it's kind of overlapping. It's talking about networking and it's talking about file structure a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just trying to understand. Yes. Yes, I, I I get that. This analogy using Microsoft Word doesn't apply in the sense that. There's no networking going on here. The OSI model or the TCP IP model refers only to networking. When you're, you know, when there's internet connection between two applications. Yep. So for example, the FTP will be a good analogy to use, like, you know, moving files back and forth because there's networking involved there. But I mean, this is my Microsoft Word and I just opened up an Excel file. There's nothing, there's no networking. So OSI model has no business here. I'm just trying to use it to right. explain. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. And honestly, it, it, it does make sense. It has to communicate with each other because files are the things being sent. So file structure and networking obviously go hand in hand. Uh, but I, I, I think I get it. I, 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 think I'm, I think I'm getting the idea of how, how, that, how that's relevant. The thing is, so the thing, Michael, is I mean, we don't see these things, right? Obviously, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, but if I go to my, okay, now exactly how I opened up this, I opened up this puzzle picture, right? Now, for this puzzle picture to open, this picture itself is somewhere. Do you realize that? This picture itself was put somewhere for us to be able to access it. Right. Where is this picture itself? It's on some web server. And the web server is called what? Very, very well mind .com. Mm -hmm. So when I click on the picture to view the picture, well, it has to be fetched or grabbed or taken or you know, picked up from whatever server it's at and displayed on my screen. Right. So the now there's packets. a process. There's a process that happens for that to happen successfully. A picture doesn't just show up boom automatically. It has to be converted. That's what he's saying. Right. So that what we just read. What we just read. It says the presentation layer component informs the application layer what type of data or graphics format to display. Mm -hmm. If you look at this picture here and I go to the very end, you can see that it's a .jpg format, right? right. .jpg. When you talk about formats for pictures, .jpg, .gif, .bmp, uh, you know, right. PNG, stuff like that, right? G GIF. And in this GIF. instance, you have uh, your your web browser is equipped to um, to to speak with all those different things and knows exactly what to get to to view that or what kind of background. To... It appears so, right? It appears so, right? It appears so. The times where 
a picture might not show correctly uh, for some reason, well, this might give us a clue why. So we know that there's certain interactions that take place, right? right. It's like if the doctor, if, the, if your doctor tells you, "Look, I need you to, uh, I need you to start eating, or I need you to start exercising," and you're like, "How does that help?" <laughs> you know, like right. what do you, yeah. what, what do you mean yeah, exercise? It's a, well, it's when a, you exercise, it's... oh, sorry, go ahead. When you exercise, this happens, and this happens to your muscles, and this happens there, and this happens there, and all these things happen on the back end. You don't really see it, but you, there's a process, there's an established process that if you, if you, if you respond to that process by exercising, they're going to see this result here. Right. Another uh, good analogy that I, that I think uh, I, I just thought of with that, what you were just describing is uh, having something sent to, so having like furniture sent to someone who works at Ikea, they don't have instructions so they can just build it because they know it. But sending that, that same thing to someone who's never looked at it in their life and just having all these pieces, it means nothing to them. It's all there, but it means nothing to them. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, I mean, like I said, people who work in, um, you know, maybe people who are vendors who have to build some of these applications, right? Um, where you have a host name here, for example, you have a username here, you have a password, right? Uh, maybe it's more, it makes more sense to people who are vendors because they have to put all these things in place. If you're gonna build a success, if you're gonna build an FTP program, you gotta have all these things built into the FTP program. And, and so they know, okay, well, we've got to put all these components there for it to work, right? So on the back end, this kind of things happen, right? There are processes that take place on the, on the presentation layer. That is some of the, I mean, it's right here, right? Convert data into a format specified by the application layer. It's right there. See that? That's for outgoing messages. For incoming messages, reverses the conversion if required by the receiving application. So there's conversion that takes place. So those two might make things a bit clearer for you guys. There's always a conversion. I mean, it's, I think if we, let's go back to this picture here. Maybe, you know, this might help to let me just put food in there. You guys are going to be hungry. Okay, so let's look at... Um, <clears throat> well, that's a hungry guy. Let's look at this, this girl here eating this food. All right. So let's think about this... this let's think about this idea. Jessica, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Let's think of conversion, right? So look at this girl putting this food in her mouth, right? Now think about this. <clears throat> when this food gets into her stomach, right? Yeah. Is it, is it going to be in exactly the same way it went into her mouth? Like this, the, exactly no. how the Cheetos are. Like no. when it gets into her stomach, it's going to be in exactly the same shape and color and texture and everything. No, it's not. How do you know that? Um, because then it just breaks down. Cause it breaks down. Yeah, she puts it in her mouth and then she chews it, so it's not gonna be the same. Okay, so that's why we my conversion. Now, you may not see all the conversion taking place, but there's a conversion that needs to take place for that for her body to be able to use the food and all that. In networking. Right. The fact that, you know, you have data like this picture, this picture of this girl with the Cheetos. Right. And you just think, oh, I just clicked on the link and it just opened up the picture. And you don't think of the fact that, well, how did this picture get to display on my screen? Where did I, where did, where's this picture at? You know, who put this picture there. Where did it come from? 
somebody put this picture right here. Uh, Jessica, where's this picture? Where's this picture from? Look at what it says here. This picture was on this website. You know what yes. that is? The, What's that? The, NYT. It was on the, yeah, the NYT. What's NYT? New York the Times. The website. New York Times? Yep. So it was part of a New York Times story. So they put it on their website. That's how we can access it. So there's a conversion that takes place to get that picture from wherever it is. Now, depends on the size of the picture. Is it too big? Is it too small? What are the colors there? It has to be converted in a way that we can read the picture or see the picture, I guess. So in some of the classes, as you continue your education, some of these things might come more together for you, but there's always a conversion that takes place, um, you know, for things to appear in terms of networking, right? Between two different systems, you send and you receive on this end. <clears throat> you send and you receive. All right, let's go on. Spend a little bit of time on the presentation layer. So the session layer, where well, we talked about that too, that is when a session is created. Just like right now we have this Zoom session. When you have a session, you have your log on. Every activity that is done is recorded. You have permissions to do whatever it is you need to do during that session. Um, you're granted a lot of, you know, rights and privileges during that session. It's like what we call when you log on and when you log off. Um, and we use the example of, you know, when you keep video in sync. So when a video, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, right here on, let's see, what page is that? We read that, page 355. So Jessica, you wanna help us with that again? Page 355, the second paragraph, and the last sentence. It says checkpointing. You see that? Jessica, did you get that? Jessica seems to have disappeared. Michael, could you pick that up, please? Oh, sorry about that. I was muted. Um, I, I apologize. Uh, which section? Page 355. Oh, thank you. The sorry. second paragraph. The last sentence. Well, not the last, the, the second to the last sentence. That's the checkpointing is a synchronization. Checkpointing and six, uh, 355, checkpointing and synchronization. 355, 355. Uh, the second sure. paragraph. The session layer also manages yeah. the mechanics of ongoing. Yeah, jump that, jump that, jump that. Go to the next sentence after that. Go to the next sentence after that. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. In addition. In addition, a process called checkpointing is performed at this layer. Checkpointing is a synchronization process between two related streams of data, such as audio and video streams in a conferencing application. The session layer keeps the audio in sync with the with the video. Huh. Okay. Okay, so if we look for, let's go to YouTube. And look for, I don't know, let's find a, let me just say, if I can find something relevant here. Next right, let's see this guy here. Okay, so let's look at this lady, actually let's look at this ad, right? Now, you guys can see this ad? Yep. Now, mm -hmm. so this lady is talking. Now, you may not hear it because of how my audio is set up, but you might have situations or times where you watch a movie or you watch a clip, and the lady is talking, but the words don't are not synced with her movement of her lips. 
Has that ever happened? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, like on net. Uh, if you ever watch a Netflix or something like that, uh, I don't know if it's happened to anyone else, but the audio like ends up being like two seconds behind sometimes or ahead. Yeah. And, like, stuff gets or messed uh, up. the subtitles sometimes do that. So that's what it's referring to here, right? What you just read, that's what it's referring to. Um, checkpointing is a synchronization process between two related streams of data, such as audio and video streams. The session layer keeps the audio in sync with the video. So here we go again. There is another layer that is responsible for doing stuff, right? For this lady's lips to be moving and the words to be in sync, it's not just automatic. You know, the video comes from a different stream and the audio comes from a different stream and they have to merge, right? They have to be in sync. Right. That process, right, is helped by the session layer. That's one of his jobs. So every time you watch a movie and everything is fine, give a thumbs up <laughs> right to the movie or something. Or to session layer and say, hey, session layer, good job. Because the session layer um, has an important part of the whole process there. You know, it just tells us that there are two different streams of data, two different streams. The video and the audio are two different streams, and they have to meet. They have to merge. They have to be merged and synced, right? They have to be in sync, synchronization. That's an interesting problem, like in uh, data streaming in general, not, not with video and with, uh, with so many other things that require everything to be working at the same time with no delay. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like it's a hassle to uh, if you want to um, say it again. Uh, I was saying um, it takes like a takes a hassle to put it like to pull it off because um, getting the exact second of like the audio and the video, like that concept. Exactly. I mean, it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, something as I mean, important can you as imagine? a drone. I mean, something as important as a drone. Even you take it, uh, take it a step down to something not so important, like a fighting video game, where the user is expected to see an action the second you press the button on both uh, things. I, I know they have fancy algorithms that'll actually basically predict what the person's gonna do, and if they don't do that, it'll skip it back one frame. And there, there's so many tricks to this, but yeah, this, uh, this, that probably all has to do with this layer. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, really so you can imagine how much uh, precision, right? That's the word. Uh, the precise moment when things happen. To, it's like, okay, you guys come to class, right? So, I mean, you guys all have totally different lifestyles. We all have different lifestyles. What you do in the morning, what you do, you know, if you have breakfast, if you have, to, if you have two classes before this class, you do all kinds of things. But you see, we have to all meet here at the precise time of 30. We all have to be synchronized in a sense, right? Like you might be, you know, wherever you are. So it's a very tough process when two things have to be synchronized. And that's what is, that's what is giving us an idea of here, right? Um, so, so that's important to know, right? That's important to know about the session layer. And uh, so the word, the word for that process, right, of where everything has to be synced, Cindy, what's that word? It starts with C. Conversion. Come on, Cindy. Checkpointing. Which is it? Checkpointing. Tell me. It's checkpointing. Checkpointing. Is that, that's what it is. That's the word. If you saw that in your assignment, you got to know, oh, okay, so that, that whole definition there, that is checkpointing. Where audio and, well, let me shut this thing off here. Where audio and video have to be in sync. All right? 
Okay, let's wrap this up here. Uh, transport layer, we talked about the flow control already, right? When uh, data has to be broken up into smaller chunks, that's it right there. It has to be broken down into smaller chunks, right? And resequenced. So if we go back to that, uh, to this description here, it's like your puzzle pieces. It might be a large piece of data, but you have to smash it up, so to speak, and then reassemble it at the other end. So right here, in a sense, um, if you looked at my FTP, if I move a file from the left side to the right side, right, it ha it's not the stream, the data stream is going to break down the data into little bits that can be transported without many problems. All right, so that's a key thing um, on the transportation layer. Handles resequencing, that is, it gets everything back in order. All right. Uh, let's see what else we can talk about here. The network layer is IP, IP addresses. That's what you call the net, uh, layer three. Uh, layer is the is where you handle, you know, IP addressing. If you have a, you know, if you have a DHCP or you have a PIPA uh, to give you your IP address, if you're a standalone machine or not, all that business is handled at the network layer. The data link layer is where you have your MAC address uh, definition at that layer, that's a layer two, right? A layer two. Um, kind of like, well, not exactly like the checkpointing, but data link layer has these two components called FCS and CRC. FCS is the frame check uh, sequence, right? And uh, contains CRC error checking code. So, you know, they want to be sure that if the data, if, I don't know, 12 packets of data was sent, 12 packets of data was also received. Nothing was lost. There was no error in the whole process of delivery. Um, it says that the software component operating at this layer is the NIC driver. We, we looked at that already. When you looked at your uh, control panel, and we looked at this information here. Let me just go back there, show you guys. You go to your Ethernet and you right click. This information here is your NIC card, all about your NIC card. That points to your data link layer, the NIC card, right? So don't, don't forget that. That's your NIC card. That's how you get your Ethernet. If you plug your cable on the back side of your desktop computer, it goes into your NIC card. Uh, the physical layer, that's the last layer, and that is where you have your, you know, basically your cables, the physical connection, or it might even be your wireless connection, all right? Now, it depends. You might use, uh, you might use, you know, electrical, you might use a, a regular cable, which uh, is made up of copper, right? Copper is the conductor. If it's a regular cable, Ethernet cable, fiber optic uses light pulses. Wireless uses radio waves. So all that is how your information goes out on the internet. You're either using fiber optic, you're using um, electrical, which is your Ethernet cable, or you're using wireless. All that uh, stuff you have, like it says here, bits have to be converted into signals for outgoing messages and signals into bits. Right, like we said, when you measure data, how do we measure the speed of data? We measure the speed of data in bits per second. Bits per second. The storage for data is measured in bits. The storage in bits. But in terms of the speed, like transfer, you want to transfer files back and forth, you measure that in bits per second. So back to my control panel, if I want to see the speed of my system, of my network system, of my system here, I go here and uh, let me see if you guys have been following along. Uh, Core, are you there? Core, are you there? All 
Cora, no Cora. Jasheen, are you there? Jared, let me go to you. You still there? Yep, I'm right here. So where will I see on this on this screen here? Where will I see the speed of my network? Or do I oh, click boy. on? Where do I, I go? On, I haven't done it on this forever. Uh, let's see. Go to go to advanced. Uh, no, no. Click on your internet. Right, right there. Like go up a little. Where's bit. there? Right here. No, 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 no. You see where it says connections and then internet. Right here? No, no, a little bit below. Right there. Right here? Yeah. There you go. Now you got your speed. So where's my speed? Uh, it says speed, and then if you look a little to the right, it says 100 megabits per second. Megabits per second. Right, that's how you measure speed of data transfer. How many bits can you transfer per second? Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. All that is tied to your NIC card. If you took out my NIC card, all this information will disappear. It means I will have no connection, you know, no connection whatsoever. You're going to see an X. If this was my NIC card and I took it out, there'll be an X here, no activity. All that happens at the physical layer. Um, so the kind of problems, if you... Um, work in IT and you work at the help desk in IT, you're going to have a lot of problems with your, you may have problems with, you know, people saying, oh, I have no internet. Sometimes the cable was not made correctly. Maybe some part of the cable is messed up uh, for some reason. Maybe the cable is not correctly inserted into the computer. Ethernet cable in PC. All right, believe it or not, when you do this job, you might have somebody call you, right, uh, Jared? Somebody calls you and says, oh, my internet doesn't work. And you get there and the cable is just hanging just exactly how it is in this picture. And the average person, some well, Thanks to COVID-19, I guess most people are probably more familiar with these things, maybe. Um, but your job is to make sure that the cable is probably is well inserted into the, you know, into that into that NIC card port, and that the, and that the cable itself is also, you know, properly created, properly built, just like you guys did your cable assignment. So that's one of the problems there. It says. Uh, EMI noise that scrambles the signals. EMI. Uh, Jared, back to you. What's EMI? You know what that stands for? Uh, electromagnetic interference. Yes, sir. That's what it is. It might be, you know, electricity, voltages. It might be, you know, something at the airport. Some, you know, it's called noise, right? It might affect your, your signal. So you don't want to be, you know, when you set up your you know, your internet and all that kind of stuff, you don't want to be, you know, if you can, not be close to facilities where you have so much interference. You might have to use different kind of cabling in that in that situation there. Uh, the IEEE is the Institute of Electro Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Like we said, they are the ones that define the local area network standards for ethernet. Uh, here's some trivia. Uh, this was called Project 802 to indicate the year, right? So the whole 802 business is tied to the year and the month when, you know, Ethernet started becoming a real, real, real thing. So you can see that 1980. Uh, Jared, where were you in 1980? I was not born. So I have a... I have a high schooler, right, who's in ninth grade, and he always, when I ask him that kind of question, he says, I was minus. He always says minus, and he gives me the age, <laughs> right? So so you can try that, Jared. Say, uh, I was minus something. <laughs> anyway. Uh, like minus 20 or so. Okay, well, there you go. So, 
So that's when um, the whole Ethernet business right, became a thing. So that's uh, in your notes there. Uh, here's the development. If you you know want to you know see the different specifications, the important specifications right are 802.11, of course, which is your wireless network of standards. 802.11, very important. Uh, the others are right there. Uh, 802.1 is the internet working. The old internet thing we talk about. 802.3 is Ethernet. So maybe just a couple for you to uh, review. All right, and that's about it. Uh, the last, well, we talked about the last layer there. So the, the uh, what you might call it, uh, there's an update. Uh, the update is there are two additional layers, right, that are attached to your data link layer. So we have seven layers in the OSI model, but the data link has two sub, you can call them sub layers attached to the data link layer. So don't forget that if you see this in your assignment, you got to remember, well, there are two, logical link and media access. This is the MAC address, right? It's, it's all, you know, built into the data link layer. That's what it describes here. The sub layers, the logical link layer controls data link communication and defines the use of logical interface points. And the media access MAC sub layer manages access to the physical medium the physical medium is the actual device that is installed on your computer or your laptop, right? So those two are like sub layers uh, to the data link layer. So technically, just a little bit technically speaking, you have what, seven plus two, nine. But these two are attached only to the data link layer. All right, so that's all we got. So all that information for you is right there in your book. You can look at uh, page 362 and 363 to see some of that expansion or sub layers that we just talked about now. And your assignment uh, will give you some hands-on projects to boost your knowledge, uh, some of the things we talked about. Okay, that's all I got. Let's, let's do the attendance and let's see if you guys have any questions. Gonna end this uh session right now.